So the last time... Hey, customers of Nowhere Games and Comics, it's me, Matthias, here at Nowhere to talk to you guys with some amazing creators because I'm wearing an awesome Aspen Comics Fathom t-shirt and holding this amazing exclusive cover for Nowhere Games and Comics of Fathom number one because right behind this camera, I have the writer of Fathom, the editor-in-chief of Aspen, as well as our cover artist, the man behind volume two of Fathom, Coy Turnbull, Vince Hernandez. Say hi, guys. What's up? What up? How you doing? So, Vince, you finally get to write yeah. the main title, Fathom. Like, you know, for all intents and purposes, the titular, you know, piece yeah. of Aspen MLT. How does it feel? Oh, it feels awesome. I mean, you know, for me, it was the comic that kind of started it all when I started in comics. Literally, like, 98, I started in June that summer, so for me, it was literally the same exact time as the book's release. I think it was issue two that was kind of in sync with my starting at Top Cow. Uh, so it's always had that little, like, uh, nugget in my brain where it's like, if I could wish list one book, it'd be Fathom. So to be sitting here, have the, you know, issue one in stores, and then have Koi on a cover with you kind of brings together, it's like a nexus of all these, like, really kind of, like, old history uh, paths that you know, your store and you have done and Koi with working at Aspen and then myself with what I was just talking about with Fathom all coming together on this one cool variant. So it's super bittersweet. I, I mean, I'm having a good time. Yeah. All right. And then Koi, we first met about 15 years ago when you were doing, Fa or actually you were doing Connor Hawk at the time. Oh, yeah, and yeah, now yeah. you're doing, uh, you yeah. did Fathom Volume 2, one of my favorite volumes of Fathom up until this amazing Volume 8. Yeah. Um, and to get you on our cover was an absolute honor. I am so that was, thankful. That was cool. um, what were you, what was your thought process as you were drawing this? Actually, do you mind showing off? The, you have the original right there. I do. Um, yeah. Well, awesome. initially, my first thought was, you know, how do I draw um, Aspen after having, you know, I haven't touched her in a little while. So um, I basically that didn't come out right at all. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> so anyways, um, but. It was a it was a chance to get reintroduced to the characters and it was fun. I hadn't drawn Killian in a while and actually the last time I drew him was in the last page of uh, volume two. So it was fun to get back to drawing him because uh, I actually thought that was the first uh, first time that I would draw him well a, a bit. So to be able to draw him as cool as I did then, now that was fun. That was fun. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, that's definitely one of my favorite characters you've ever drawn. Thank you. So, I mean, obviously, owning the original artwork up there, you know, like, <laughs> Koi and Killian are definitely two of my favorite pieces combined, so having that on our cover is amazing. Thank and you. then you did something really cool with the background on this. Mm. I don't know if you all can tell here. Let me go show you the color cover really quick. But that background might look a little familiar to you San Diego locals. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about that, Koi? So, every time I come to San Diego, I mean, every time, I see these hills and I see um, all these different um, sites that, to me anyway, makes San Diego. So when I was asked, you know, to draw um, Nowhere Comics, you know, as a bar, or at least the idea of it as a bar um, on a beach, I immediately started looking up uh, for this shot that I remember seeing uh, of the cold in San Diego. So I pretty much, I didn't have an exact, exact reference, but I knew that I wanted that particular look. So worked and I think it took me a few hours to find a reference but when I found it bam put it in yeah I mean that is beautifully the iconic La Jolla Cove like you go look that up on Google I mean Koi mm. knocked that out of the park like nobody's business fun. seriously that was fun yeah. part of, a part of like when I'm drawing these uh, images a lot of people tend to get into the, the figures and that's great but to me the backgrounds work just to me they're, they're the stars just as much as the uh, figure if not just a step behind so that was it, was, it was an honor to be able to put that in there, honestly. It, 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 without it, I think the images would have been kind of flat. Yeah. I think I think it, it came out amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, yeah. All right. And I got to point out, so one of the first guys who got uh, our copy signed, Miguel, is mm -hmm. commenting that he just got to read the, co uh, the comic and really enjoyed it. He believes it's awesome work. So for those of you who have not had a chance yet to read Fathom at all, let alone this new Volume 8 Number 1, which is a perfect jumping on point, mm -hmm. do you want to talk a little bit about what's happening in this volume of Fathom, a little bit about who the character is? Yeah, I mean, I went for a little bit of a reset in terms of what we've been going, in the direction we've been going in Fathom. I mean, if you're a reader who's returned from volume six and seven, you'll notice that uh, this story takes 
a bit of a, I don't want to say breaks, but he puts the story a little bit more into Aspen and Killian and what happened in Volume 1, that narrative of, you know, basically what's going on with the blue underneath the surface and what's going on with the humans above, but also this overreaching plot of, like, how does it affect our planet? Um, so I kind of, I, I basically slowed the story down in that aspect to kind of, like, I really wanted to capture, like, what made Volume 1 super cool, because... Uh, again, going back to my being on the book for the first time, I was like, well, this is my go at it. I want to do the classic, you know, Fathom that I fell in love with back in 98. So we kind of uh, reached this part of the story where we could kind of bring all the classic Volume 1 characters back into it. So you have Aspen, and then you have Killian, you have Keanu. You don't have Cannon because he's dead, so... Sorry, Canon fans, but uh, oh, I was a fan. Yeah, I was a fan. I was a fan. I was a fan. Yeah. Everybody loves Canon. You can about say so one. because we have this yeah. wonderful book where he did the interiors oh, on it. Oh man, I was a fan, and I got on to him about that. But yeah, carry on. Yeah, I know. I I love Canon too, but you know, and I get asked that a lot. Like, oh, are you gonna bring Canon back? And I'm like, one, we did bring him back, and it was you know a hilarious kind of volume that really I say hilarious, but it was actually kind of tragic in the story yes. itself. But uh, I always laugh at those like bringing the character back stories. Okay. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, so I went for like a classic feel, that Michael Turner feel uh, for Volume 1, and from what I'm gathering, from what people are already telling me, they're kind of digging that vibe, which I think maybe goes to what is kind of cool nowadays with a lot of the retro stuff and a lot of basically taking stuff that we liked as a kid, like with, you know, with Marvel doing an end game and where it's, you know, this is just the, the versions of the characters that we grew up loving. And so that's kind of what I wanted to do with Fathom. Um, and so it's cool. Like I said, it's awesome to be able to be here. And I think it's kind of neat that you have the one exclusive uh, in the world right now, and you have the writer and the cover artist all in the same spot. I mean, I don't think that happens very often in comics, to be honest, just on a pure logistical standpoint nowadays. So, I mean, that's pretty neat. Easily on two different sides of the world. Yeah, so, exactly. You know. To be able to have, you know, the same team, you know, that's just kind of worked out from, you know, our general direction. It wasn't something that we, you flew us out here for. So I think that's cool. I mean, you know. San Marcos sounds like a really awesome town. I've been here twice now for the signings. Uh, so it's cool that, you know, you guys would be able to put up together something like this, you know? Yeah, dude, thank you. And then you guys both are doing other things right now. Koi, you've been recently doing some amazing Valiant covers. You want to talk thank a little you. bit about that? Yeah, Like, I think we have a um, few right here. Yeah, we have two. Uh, there's actually a third one that's actually out uh, from Livewire, number two, I believe it is. But, um... Probably, sure we like, have that probably, we'll have to pull it out almost a year ago i was asked you know to do um a cover for a valiant actually it was uh i guess that was november really um this past november to do a the ninja cover and from there just one two three just kept on getting covers out right afterwards and it seems like you know i like their character i love their character you know like i love their characters and i would like to grace their covers for more you know so hopefully this will be a good little relationship in the long run but uh -huh. it's fun stuff though because each character um, are, even though these are the same Valiant characters from way back, they're different. They, you know, the costumes are a little more edgier, um, more modern. And because of that, it's a challenge. It's like, you know, the way I drew before um, back in the day was one way. So now it's like I get to grace these characters who I love and the style that I've always saw and seen in my head. So, yeah, I'm having fun. And then there's, there's more to come as well. So. All right. Any other projects you're currently working on? I'm actually on talk about? Um, creating a uh, creator own at the moment. Uh, actually, of uh, this character, Soul Retriever. And uh, we've already got it written out, got a couple plots written and basically uh, designing characters at the moment for it. So then there's a graphic novel uh, called The North Star that I'm working on as well. And that's going to be, that, it's already, basically it's a story of uh, Frederick Douglass. And we're, t we're basically going to follow him from um, when he was a kid, uh, take himself, out of, uh, well, he emancipated himself, basically. And then eventually sat down with the president and basically give his view on, on what he went through as, as a slave. And how he made himself into the man that we eventually learned to love. You know, so it's 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 never been done in a graphic novel form, and that's where I come in. Uh, Page is awesome. I'm not. I mean, maybe because I drew him, I feel like <laughs> as if you know uh, they look really good. But to be honest with you, I'm really, as he can attest, I'm really hard on myself when it comes down to the actual work. So if I say it looks good, it looks good. You know. <laughs> and where can people find those? All right, so. At the moment, I'm still working on the, uh, the graphic novel, so that as soon as I'm done with that, that should be out with, uh, we'll find a company here soon to, to actually publish that. But the um, Soul Retriever, no home at the moment. 
Okay. But as soon as we have something, I will be able to tell everybody. All and right. Trust and me. To follow you on social media to find that info out, they're going to track you down at? CoyTurnbull.com. All right. And just go to Instagram and look, look me up at Coy Turnbull Art. Awesome. And then Vince has quite a few projects. Some of them have already come out, but we know he's also the writer on Zombie Tramp, currently Dan Mendoza's classic adult character. And I think you have more on the way. Do you want to talk a little bit about what you're doing right now, Vince? Yeah, actually, it's kind of a double down day for me because 59 came out. I said double down. Yeah. Pointing at the <laughs> zombie Tramp cover, but uh, yeah, 59's in stores today. I started on issue 57, so this is still the first story arc. Um, issue three in that arc, and uh, it debuts this new zombie tramp, Angel Lynch, and I'm excited about it because it's kind of Dan Mendoza's, uh, you know, his second version of the classic character. Um, I don't know how familiar your, you know, viewers are with Zombie Tramp, but it's basically run all the way up to issue 60 with okay. one character, uh, and she's awesome, yeah. uh, Janie Bell. Yeah. And so it was really a, kind of a risky thing for oh, Action Lab, me. the publisher, oh, to do this <laughs> new version of, of uh, Zombie Tramp. So, you know, that's where I come in, and I've been helping Dan with the story. Uh, and this is the third issue in our first story arc, so I'm excited to be here and be able to also have this as well. kind of hits a different market than the Fathom stuff, so it's kind of cool to have a few different, you know, projects in different genres that I think mm. would appeal to other people, you know, because, like, me personally, I enjoy doing different projects in different mm -hmm. types of genres. You know, I don't want to always write the same thing. Um, and then I do have, and I was giving Matthias the, uh, you know, first, you know, write a refusal to even talk about a Kickstarter in a comic book shop. But um, I have this coming out next month, and it's basically, it's called Syria Underworld Pimp Hustler. And, uh, hmm. I, you know, I like to build it as like Eight Mile in Hell. It's about a woman who's trying to make a rap career in the underworld, and she kind of realizes that, uh, the underworld is not that different from reality in that mm. things really suck for someone trying to make it in any realm and you know it's kind of my uh, passion project that I wanted to do on my own and self-publish and um, just do it by my own kind of rules and, and so I'm having fun with it and I am bringing in a lot of the people that are uh, I collaborate with on a daily basis some of the you know best you know artists team of production people like uh, that I work with at Aspen. So for me, I mean, it's not too different doing this comic than my usual stuff. You know? Speaking of your boys at Aspen, I think they're watching live right now under Gabe's account and they're laughing a little bit. <laughs> they're like, Vince is, not, uh, I'm gonna hear about it tomorrow. <laughs> they're gonna tell me what I did wrong. But uh, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, they've all been super cool about about that and about just uh, letting me go wild on Fathom. So. Um, well, it looks like you have somebody from Aspen working with you on that. I think I saw a familiar name that some of our customers might know who's been here signing the great Zen, one of our favorite letterers in the business. Yeah, Zen's on the uh, lettering. I mean, like I said, it, for me personally, uh, to do a project like this would be silly to go outside the box and not, you know, try to one, bring the work to the people that I, you know, I care about and also the people that I work with on a daily basis I think are some of the most talented people in the world. So. Uh, it was kind of a no-brainer. I was like, you know, um, of course I'm going to have my buddy Frank edit it, even though he's probably watching this and talking S, uh, you know. And then, uh, you know, Gabe yes, yes. and Mark. Uh, Hard Facebook censorship. Uh, yeah, right. Talking <laughs> S. But, uh, yeah, and, you know, Mark and Gabe, uh, and everybody across the board. You know, I've, I've always wanted to do something that's just, hey, here's me putting in, you know, all the eggs in one basket. But it's awesome to be able to do it with, the, you know, like I said, my best buddies. So... Uh, I'm excited it comes out next month. Uh, I'm throwing a big old birthday bash. Uh, hopefully people you know, who see it here don't go crazy uh, <laughs> telling the entire world. But yeah, I mean, we're going big. We're going to do a Kickstarter. I still got the books in stores, so um, lots of fun stuff. And I believe we will be stocking that in the store if you know that's good by you. Yeah, you know, for so sure. You'll be able to grab that. I mean, you know, Kickstarter it if you can, but if you can't, don't worry. Nowhere's got you covered. Absolutely. For uh -huh. sure. Of all the stores... In the LA area, I mean, you guys have definitely been one of the biggest supporters uh, of me personally, as not just a, like a you know somebody represent a brand, but as a personal creator um, in kind of like the nowhere community. So for sure, absolutely. Yeah, and I got to say, I mean, I could not be more honored to have two creators in my shop than Vince Hernandez and Coy Turnbull. I have been a fan of both of these guys for you know upwards of over 15 years i know 15 years since goy and you know i've known vince back when he was your assistant editing at top cow i think assistant editing yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
But yeah, so I mean, you know, now editor in chief of Aspen, you know, one of the best artists in the industry, you know, whether it's doing the awesome Nowhere cover, his amazing covers of Valiant, my favorite volume of Fathom, Fathom Volume Two, and then you know, both of these guys have one of the best characters in comics shared combined. You know, the man who draw Killian, you know, best, and the man who is writing Killian currently. So, thank you guys for that. Thank you all for watching. You still have another hour to come meet these guys here in the store. Get your copies signed. We're doing some amazing deals. Make sure you grab this amazing Nowhere exclusive cover drawn by Koi, written by Vince. Thank you all for watching. Thank you guys.